it's October 25th, 2019. We've had a couple of frosts here and it's about time I get out and dig up my potatoes from my true potato seed experiment this year. I actually have dug quite a few already because we needed potatoes to eat. Most of what we dug already was Katahdin and these are the two remaining clones of Katahdin and I put my hand in here for comparison. Katahdin was the best one of the tetraploids from seed by far. A lot of these produced easily as well as tuber grown potatoes and none of them produced poorly and there were several clones that I decided to move forward with as clones. They were so good in terms of yield and all of these have been pretty good tasting potatoes. They're pretty uniform. Everything has a light colored skin and a, a whitish flesh and a very thin skin. This was really good. The other tetraploids that I grew uh, this year, Bountiful didn't produce anything to speak of. And then the Shetland Blacks, I had two different strains of Shetland Black. And I did keep a couple of those back, but on the most part, they didn't produce very well. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. And a lot of them produced nothing. And then quite a few others produced very little. Here's one clone, here's another one, another one. Uh, I'll take that. Thanks. There's <clears throat> some more. I mean, some of these, as you can see, some are better than others. This one is respectable, so I ended up with several Shetland Blacks that were this kind of a yield, which I think this is enough that I'll move forward with this one as a clone just to see what it would do in another year. But on the whole, I mean, we're typically getting yields like this, which is, I mean, a lot of these aren't even worth eating. They're so tiny. And that's about it, I think, for the tetraploids. Let me double check. There's a few more teeny weeny ones. A couple more. There's another group of Katahdin over here, and some of these Katahdin are not bad. And these are at least worth eating. Again. That's it. Let's look at diploids. Diploid potatoes have been the they've been the real surprise this year. The yield on these has been fairly good, and I'd say that the total yield for the diploid row absolutely exceeded the tetraploid row, which is really unusual. And I think it was just a combination of the exact varieties that we planted of tetraploid and dip, diploid, and the exact growing conditions this year. In any case, some of the diploid varieties were not very good. And in the past, when I've grown diploids, I've never gotten enough to eat. And usually I don't even get enough to move forward with as a clonal variety. They either make nothing at all, or a couple of tiny BB-sized microtubers that yeah. don't even go to the next year. Uh, this year I have enough to eat, plenty of which to go forward with. Let's take a look at these and we'll talk about which varieties I liked best. The first one is Careta Amaria. This one's been really productive. These uh, died back when it got hot and dry in the summer, but then they came back and almost all of these were growing and even flowering up until frost. But we'll go through these and I'll show you what kind of results we have. Here's a, a yellow one, very nice. Yeah. That's yellow, small, pink purpley black, bit of a nice dark black blue, blue black, black. That's the first group of Carreta Amaria. I'm pretty happy with these. These are, in a lot of cases, we have enough to eat, enough to move forward with. Not bad at all. Next variety here is Cthulhu's Jockstrap. I was really excited about this one because I like the name a lot and the plants were incredibly vigorous. And this has been a great variety. Most of these yielded really well. In addition to that, although the variety was really vigorous and produced a ton of stolons, the vast majority of the tubers were right under the main clump, which is really excellent and really easy for digging. So as far as a seed strain goes, this is actually an awesome one. See, we got pretty good yields. Nice looking 
potatoes. This is all Cthulhu's jock strap. Really nice, really nice. All right. One thing I wanted to note is I went through and tagged some of these varieties and I was looking for early dormancy. And what I was hoping for is I could find some varieties of both tetraploids and diploids that although they were dormant early, they still produced half well, decent. And this is an example. I got three or four varieties in the diploids and tetraploids both that went dormant by mid-July and still produced reasonably well. And this is really great because I'd definitely like to select some early maturing potatoes out of this population as well as some late maturing ones. So I think I'm in a good position to do that. So here's one of the ones that we'll move forward with as an early maturing one. And here's the rest of the Thulu's Jockstrap. It's a really neat purple one. All right, let's look at the next variety. Tiny variety. Okay, next there's um, more Carreta Amaria, and once again, these have done really pretty well. I mean, there's some like this, and this is not great, but some of these other ones are pretty respectable. Really have nothing bad to say about some of these varieties. The next one is Unknown Diploid. This one is sort of a nice multicolor. We ate some of these last week, and they're really, really great texture, great taste. Not bad at all. These are really small, but a dark color, hard to dig up. These are kind of a exotic shape. Sort of a weird one. Really, on the whole, Unknown Diploid did not yield all that well, but it was not terrible. Some of them are pretty decent. Next variety up is Tree Leaves Mix, and that one was the worst one of the diploids by a wide margin. A couple of the ones we got half decent. I mean, here's another one that went dormant early, but this one and this early dormant were the only ones in the tree leaves mix that yielded much. I mean, most of them did about like this, and I'd say two thirds of the plants yielded literally nothing. The final one, uh, not the final one, this is a Poughkeepsie mix. Uh, Poughkeepsie, not a mix, it's just Poughkeepsie. Um, this was okay. Not not great, really, but it was okay. I mean, some of these are pretty terrible, but it was okay. Poughkeepsie, Poughkeepsie, Poughkeepsie. Yeah, finally, Magic Dragons. I've tried Magic Dragons for years. This is the first time I've ever grown it and had any potatoes to eat. Any potatoes that you know, amount to anything. These tiny ones here, a couple years I've grown it and I would get something like this and then they wouldn't even make it to the following season. A lot of times I would literally get not a single tuber, even a microtuber out of them. And to be fair, some of these plants did produce nothing, but a couple of these did pretty well. And the last one here, this isn't bad at all. And this is for sure the best uh, Magic Dragons I've ever got. So I was pretty happy with this one. So that's the uh, seed tubers. I'm gonna gather all these up and we'll see uh, what we end up with. TPS results. This is a final idea of the yield of decent usable, as in not poked with a pitchfork or cut by a shovel, not rotten, not bug eaten, and not so small they're not worth bothering with. The larger bulb crate here is the diploid potatoes. It's a really beautiful mix. You can see all the diversity of colors and shapes and textures. That was three of these pots full. This is a pot of tetraploid. Over the course of the season, I have, I have picked um, two other pots like this of the tetraploids. So actually my total yield of TPS tetraploids and diploids is basically the same. So I don't know if anybody else has ever had results like that, but I'm super surprised because I consider my 
growing conditions, particularly the fact that I don't have a very long, cool growing season in the fall, uh, this equal yield of diploids and tetraploids is pretty amazing. And the, uh, of course the diploids are on the balance, smaller, but the total pounds per square footage has been Dad, you know essentially I identical. So we're gonna go on here in a minute and look at our tuber raised potatoes. This is the first of my tuber piece planted potatoes. These were planted in the traditional way where you take pieces of tuber and cut them or else you just take whole small tubers and put them in the ground. And most of these I only did three to six plants. And this is Yog Shoggoth. It's a variety that I got from Oxbow Farm this spring. And the plants were pretty amazing on this. Definitely the most vigorous plants and really resistant to everything. Heat, drought, insects. Really wide spreading, super aggressive plants. And the potatoes were everywhere. And the total yield has been really good, but on the whole, the tuber size is quite small. So that's the only thing I'd find lacking in these, but I'd be happy to grow these out for another year and see how they hold up going forward. Uh, and certainly they'd be good for breeding purposes to save seed from at the very least, because I can't really make controlled crosses at this point consistently, but, or at all. But in any case, Yog Shoggoth from Oxbow Farms, pretty good yield. I mean, it yielded, you know, at least a third as much as a hundred foot row of seed, TPS seed, true potato seed, tetraploids. This is a tetraploid variety, by the way. Let's go look at the next variety. This is the second of the tuber pieces that I planted that I received this year from Oxbow Farm. This variety is Sarpo Mira times bulk F2, 10 pound yield. One true potato seed plant yielded 10 pounds from this variety. I think that was a very special situation. These were good yielding potatoes, and on the whole, we're talking about nice sized potatoes. Some of them are, you know, smaller, but on the whole, these are very nice sized potatoes, and the plants were quite productive. I only had three plants. It wasn't an exceptionally good yielding potato, but it's certainly respectable. And out of all of the tuber pieces ones, it's the most like an ordinary commercial type potato. It's a very attractive color, the bicolor, pink and white. But in terms of the growth habit of the plants and the maturity of the plants and uh, position of the tubers in the soil, this was very typical commercial type potato. So. A very good potato and I would definitely want to plant a lot of this out next year and maybe make it a primary potato for us. It's quite good. So this is a nice variety. This is the third and final of the tuber produced potatoes that I dug up today. I do want to make it clear that I had more than three varieties of these, but the other ones I've already dug up and we've already eaten them. One of them was another Sarpomira dry variety that we really liked the taste and texture of, and it was a pretty good yielding one with nice tubers. It was more of a yellow skinned, uh, white fleshed one, and I saved some of that to replant. I don't have that to show, of course, since most of it's already been eaten, but that was also a really great variety. This is TLSF17 Pink from Oxbow Farm. And this is a beautiful variety. I'm sure these would be a lot prettier if I washed them, but these are really nice pink skinned white fleshed potatoes, high yielding. These are a small to medium sized potato, but they're not ridiculously small. They're pretty respectable and just a nice potato. I don't really have anything bad to say about this. It's a attractive looking potato. The yield was good and they seemed like pretty strong, vigorous plants. So, pretty happy with these ones too. And that is it for 
potato harvest this year. Pretty excited next year to move forward and plant out all the best ones that I saved back from this year, both tetrapoid and diploid, and then potentially to save seeds from some of those, or even some of those moving forward once I see what some of these do in the second or third year going forward from larger tuber pieces. So, fun stuff. We certainly had enough potatoes to eat, and I learned a great deal. I think I perfected growing potatoes from seed and getting a reasonable enough harvest to make it worthwhile in one season. Although it's still absolutely better to grow potatoes from cut tuber pieces if you really want a high consistent yield. There's no question about that. In any case, that's the potato results. So thanks for watching and hopefully I can do more videos next year about potatoes again.